Doctor Strange. Not only does he sound remarkably like House MD, he is the Sorcerer Supreme, a master of the mystic arts. And as we know from Thor, magic is just science we don't understand yet. Now his powers allow him to experience realities beyond those that we regularly perceive. And one of those that's hinted at in the film has served as the home of most of his nefarious foes, including Dormammu. That's the dark dimension. But does a place like that actually exist? First up, let's be clear by what we actually mean by a dimension. The number of dimensions is simply the minimum number of coordinates, which are essentially just numbers, that you need to define any space. Let's say we take a line, even a really wiggly one like that. You just need one number to define any point on it, say the distance along the line. A surface on the other hand, say like the surface of the Earth, needs two coordinates, so it's two-dimensional, latitude and longitude for example. And our universe seems to have three spatial dimensions because I can move left to right, backwards and forwards, and of course up and down. And don't forget time as well, that is also a dimension, a slightly different dimension, but we won't get into that here. In Doctor Strange and other works of science fiction though, the word dimension is often used to describe other planes of existence, say alternate or parallel universes. The idea being that to get to one of those places you have to travel through a dimension beyond the standard three. How Doctor Strange actually does that? Well, you can check out a video on the Hybrid Network to find out. Let's talk about the word dark too, because it's often used in cosmology, usually for things that we don't really understand yet, because they don't seem to interact electromagnetically. They don't give off any wavelengths of light that we can detect, but we do see their gravitational effects. Dark matter, for instance, is currently thought to be some sort of exotic, weakly interacting massive particle that shapes the structure of galaxies and the universe, cosmic scaffolding, as it's often been known. And dark energy, we think, is the cosmological constant, the energy of the vacuum itself, which is driving the expansion of the universe and accelerating it. So if we're looking for Doctor Strange's dark dimension, we really want to find a dimension that's dark. Extra dimensions may not be complete fiction. They've actually been proposed as a possible solution to the hierarchy problem. This is the question of why gravity is so much weaker than the other fundamental forces. Now we know at energies of around 100 giga electron volts or quadrillion degree C if you prefer, that the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force have the same strength and they merge to become the electro-weak force. It looks like the strong nuclear force does exactly the same thing at a slightly higher energy. But gravity still remains 10 to the power of 32 times weaker. That is a huge problem for a theory of everything. So how might extra dimensions solve this conundrum? Well, if we say that the three other forces and all matter is confined to just the regular three dimensions of space, but that gravity is allowed to spread out not only across those three, but extra dimensions as well, then what we would observe as gravity and its strength would in fact be diluted. And only if we could see the full picture across all dimensions would its strength equal that of the other forces. Doesn't that sound like a perfect definition of a real dark dimension in physics? It does to me. But what are these dimensions possibly like? One early answer to this question came from Kaluza and Klein, who proposed that maybe we don't notice these extra dimensions because they are really, really small and curled up, known as compactified dimensions. And it was a great analogy for how these operate, which was actually recently featured in Stranger Things. It's the analogy of the tightrope walker and the ant or flea. 
Now, a tightrope walker is obviously a lot bigger than the size of the tightrope, so they can only move in one dimension, backwards or forwards along the tightrope. But because the ant or flea is so much smaller than the size of that tightrope, well, they can move around it as well. They can access an extra dimension. The idea being to access extra dimensions, you need to probe distances much smaller than their size. In order to solve the hierarchy problem, you can either have lots of absolutely tiny extra dimensions or just a few slightly larger ones. Now, one extra dimension just won't do the trick. It'd have to be the size of an astronomical unit in that case, which means we would have noticed it by now. But actually, two could sort you out. It'd only have to be the size of about 100 micrometers in that case to solve the hierarchy problem. Or, if you believe string and end theory, they suggest there may be six or seven extra dimensions all about the size of the Planck length and curled up into these weird Calabi Yao shapes. But these sorts of dark dimensions are no good for Doctor Strange, because he is just far too big to travel through them. And of course, shrinking is Ant-Man's thing. But there is an alternative theory. This is where we need to get brainy. Just like the words on a piece of paper are confined to the two-dimensional brain that is the surface of the paper itself. What if we are confined to a three-dimensional brain that exists within a higher dimensional space? Because we're tied to that brain, it doesn't mean we have to limit the size of any extra dimensions. One theory, the randall sundrum model, or RS model, has only one extra dimension, but two brains at either side of it. One of those brains is the universe as we perceive it, containing all of the matter and forces of the standard model of particle physics. We'll call that the weak brain. The other is the gravity brain, where gravity naturally lives, though gravity itself can permeate the extra dimension. Now, if the weak brain contains negative energy and the gravity brain contains positive energy, then via general relativity, the extra dimension will be incredibly warped. And that means gravity itself would exponentially decay across the extra dimension, meaning we would see it as being very, very weak. Now, technically, in this model, the dark dimension would be that extra dimensional space between the two brains. But what if Doctor Strange is actually referring to the gravity brain? The gravity brain would be an incredibly strange place to visit. Distances are shrunk by 16 orders of magnitude. That means you'd be a tenth of the size of a proton. Your mass would also be two million times that of the entire human races and time would be accelerated to such a rate that from the formation of the planet Earth to now would be 14 seconds to you. Basically, the gravity brain would be weirder than anything depicted within the Doctor Strange movie. But it's time for a reality check because we have, to this day, absolutely no experimental evidence of there being any extra dimensions whatsoever, making this entire video some fancy maths, but not really physics. That's not to say we haven't looked for them. In fact, the LHC has provided some of the most stringent conditions on extra-dimensional theories, managing to rule them out up to certain sizes or equivalently their energies better than pretty much any other experiment that we've done. On the flip side though, there are still areas that we haven't yet looked and that leaves the possibility open of extra dimensions, dark dimensions from Doctor Strange possibly being out there. All we have to do is find them. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but head over to the Hybrid channel to see a sister video to this. I'll hand over to Michael to tell you more. How's it going guys? It's Fanwilla here and great video, Martin. If you're interested in figuring out how exactly it is that Doctor Strange travels across dimensions, be sure to head over to the Hybrid Network YouTube channel. Thanks guys, take care.
So go and check that one out. And thank you again for watching. Cheers.